It's a total different boat, how it looks, but just looking at it, I can just see all its flaws and faults. And when we go through it and sand it, rip out all this carpet. It's actually a bit of a job in here. I'm gonna have to pull the hydrovane apart and take it off. Let the nesting begin. With our new crew member, the Spud, very much on the way, we've got Nanji high and dry and ready for refit number two. We figured now is the best time to get work done before our hands are full of diapers. Welcome to morning in the boatyard. Time to get things started. We've got the stainless guy coming here this morning. And so the plan is we're going to rebuild all these davits, get rid of these old manky solar panels, put a big new panel up on top, which will have more, more power, oh, oh, more power. And then that surfboards will go underneath that panel. And we have a bit of a support that'll come out here. This is an old wind, wind turbine pole. And so we'll extend that up so that one day when we get a wind turbine, it'll go on top of that. And then off to the side of that, we're gonna, same sort of frame as what's going out in the davits here. We'll have a little swing arm, which will then be a, a hoist for the outboard here. So that's the plan. So the stainless guy's coming at nine to quote us up for that, and he'll build it here in the yard. That'll be good, so I don't need to cull too many surfboards. I'm allowed three. I've, Benita said two, but I've convinced the boss that I'm allowed three. So, three should be enough. Time will tell. But sacrifices, you know. Two kids, two kids and a wife to please these days, you know. <laughs> Nearly got everything out from downstairs. And, and Juan, one of the workers here in the boatyard, has just come and had a suss and I showed him what I want done with all the sanding. Showed him his tools and how he's gonna operate and uh, he's pretty happy to get started tomorrow. So he'll start at nine, goes to lunch at 12 for one or two hours, he said. <laughs> and then he knocks off at five. Uh, so I don't know if we get six hours out of him, that's a pretty good start, I reckon. Yeah, we'll see how fast that goes, but today I need to finish getting everything out and I'll plastic up or like put drop sheets around for where he is not to sand, and then we got the vacuum there sitting ready and waiting. Yeah, so we get one sanding, so then we should have the stainless guy organised, and then we'll have the sanding organised, and then it's, uh, I can get started on my task then. <sighs> All right, well, that's everything off Nanji. It, it sounds like hollow and echoey in here now, because there's nothing nothing in here to uh, stop the noise so it's real echoey sound it feels a bit weird it's so barren even when we moved on to Nanji because we bought it as is there's still stuff everywhere so I don't think Nanji's been this empty for a very long time sounds weird but that's a good feeling I'll uh, look forward to just getting full into this and sanding it and painting it it's going to look so good when it's done I'm actually really excited for it yeah it's a total different boat and how it looks, but just looking at it, I can just see all those flaws and faults, and I just know when we go through it and sand it and rip out all this carpet and everything, that'll be the next step. It's just, it's gonna be a different world in here. And that's what we want. We don't wanna make Nanji some modern apartment. We like the classic wooden look, so we're really gonna emphasize that, and that's what we're gonna bring out and make it look better. So that's our plan. And I reckon the plan that we have is going to turn out bloody awesome. Bloody awesome. Bit of hard work ahead, but hey, didn't hurt anyone now, did it? All right. Are you comfy, buddy? Are you comfy? Are you missing over in the bed in here? Just prepping everything, so I'm taking off all like the hooks, any sort of like, anything that's kind of poking out where I've got cables and looms that are running along and 
I'll have to take like the iron av off and just all these sorts of things that are going to be in the way of putting up wood and of sanding and varnishing it. Just going to make things easier rather than having to do little fiddly bits around everything. I'll just take it all off and you can just easily sand it and easily paint it and then yeah and I'll just put it all back on again at the end. Just covering all the white bits up in plastic and the stuff that I don't want sanded or painted just so to make it stupid proof just in case old mate starts going too ham on it. I will paint all these white again anyway but we'll just concentrate on the varnish first then we'll do the white after but I reckon it's time to start ripping out some of this old shitty carpet and, and honestly I'm actually very excited to be doing this I don't know what the 80s or 90s or well Nancy was launched in 96 but I don't know they might have been influenced still by a bit of the 80s or 90s sort of decor carpet I guess it's a good insulation and so it is good for the inside of the boat I suppose but carpet gets mouldy and carpet gets stinky and you always got to clean it and it's just generally looks like shit <laughs> so let's rip it out yeah let's just rip it out that's what I want rip it out <laughs> already found problem number one the bottom of this cupboard here because there's two layers of carpet it looks like there's an older layer which is straight out of the 90s and then they've modernized the carpet with this gray stuff how it's like, nice and trimmed around but it's, it's basically the carpets that's holding together the bottom of this shelf so I'm gonna have to just take out that shelf and cut a new one out of ply now, uh, just another task to be done. It's so gross, it has to come out. That old pink carpet is just next level disgusting. Get off my boat. as old as the boat but it's done pretty good considering how old it is. Get that second layer. Yeah. Destroy. Be gone. Good riddance. <laughs> ah, off to work we go. I'm enjoying the boat yard, getting up nice and early again. Getting stuck into it. How good's that? The unit we're staying in is literally straight across the road from the boat yard. Our unit's on the other side of the building, so we're not overlooking the yard, but... So we can't see Nanji at night, but I don't know, I'll see her enough, so... Seeing her at 6.30 this morning will be early enough, I think. Yeah, so it's only like a 150 metre walk from the unit across into Nanji, and we can start work for the day, so it's a pretty ideal situation. Let's see the whippet and see how he's going. Hello, puppy. Hello. Who are you? Did I wake you up? All right, now we're down to the final last bits of carpet, which is, I'm feeling pretty good. It's so echoey in here, eh? I wonder what it'll be like taking the carpet away. I guess it'll be full of clothes then. So I'll have to take the shelf off on this side as well. That's kind of snug fit in there, but I'll take it off to make it easier for varnishing and then that'll be easier to lay up my, my woodwork as well. And then I think I'm gonna put along the back here, this back bulkhead, it's not really a full bulkhead, it was more just a, they plywood in between just to separate the section, the aft cabin into the lazarette, but there is like the solid bulkhead sort of sides, but this bit here is not structural, all of that is just there for looks, and 
as you can see here, it's kind of being damaged. It's all soft and water rotted out. So I'll be interested to see what happens when I uh, pull that off. I know Benita won't want me to do that, but I will be doing that because if you're gonna do a job once, you do it right the first time. So I'll pull that off and we'll see what is the result there. Should, should be pretty easy to cut a new piece of ply. I could even cut the ply downstairs and lay out my phone and slat, slat work as well downstairs. But I don't, know, don't get too far ahead of myself. Firstly, we'll just pull off this carpet. There's not many things that are more frustrating when you get down to the last screw and the head is threaded. Man, a threaded screw when you're trying to get it out is the most frustrating and annoying time waste, energy waste, all of the above. <sighs> One screw holding in this shelf and it's threaded. Man. When all else fails, get the persuader. <laughs> Well, everything's off, the carpet's all off, everything's plasticked up. We're ready to start making an absolute mess in here. Yeah! I can, I've got such a picture in my mind. I don't know whether I'm going to do vertical slats or horizontal. I think vertical because that's what the bulkhead is and it'll kind of match in with that, but horizontal would be a whole lot easier. I think they'd both look good. Horizontal because Nanji is stripped teak that run that way. A strip cedar built that run horizontally that way. So like in a boat building sense, it kind of makes sense to run them horizontal, but in a aesthetically upon the eye sense, I feel like that they should blend in with the bulkhead, but yeah, I'm not real sure yet. We'll decide upon that when we get the wood. this so that's that's a good idea but otherwise go hard I, I couldn't find dust masks and you, you have a mask for you all the shops say no because of COVID yeah you okay? okay no problem man thank you welcome to the man cave <sighs> So part of hitting the reef, it's been a bit of a scenario where we thought we'd fix most things, but you know, there's those little niggling things that have popping up after a bit of wear and, and use of Nanji after we've gone back in the water. And one of them was the bent shaft and the other one is the hydro vane. And so when we were sailing down here, we were kind of just looking at the, at the wind vane and I was like, is that, is that moving? You know, because as it flops side to side and steers the boat and Sure enough, as it's kind of flopped the other side, you can see the whole vein go whoom. So we're like, whoa, stop using that, something's going wrong. There's four bolts that hold the hydro vein to the transom of Nanji. And the transom, I've put these backing plates, solid big uh, thick aluminium backing plates on. But I think, because there has been a bit of an issue in the transom previously where there was a bit of water and a bit of rot, but I've like, I've treated all that previously, but jumping in here, you can see these lines that have come out and the backing plate here has come away from the uh, chain plate a little bit. So it's actually a bit of a job in here. So I figured I'm going to have to pull the hydro vein apart and take it off, sand this back and probably just reinforce it all with glass and then put the plates back on. But to do that, it's a pretty, pretty big deal. And so I'm currently just going to pull the hydro vein apart and we'll take the top off and we'll see if we can't just start pulling it off. Yeah, you can see because of these like water stains that are running down the side of Nanji, the, the pads that the hydro veins sit on that raise it off the back of the transom, they had cracked, well that bottom one had cracked and broke when we had hit the reef. I seen it when we were in the yard last time, but I was like, I'll deal with it later. And sure enough, yeah, it wasn't staining at that stage, but now because there's water going into the top of that pad and so it's leaking out, and draining, so I'm gonna to have to replace that bottom pad between the transom and the hydro vein. 
So we'll have to get a nice new bit of solid, solid wood for that. So that's a, a big part and I know we've nearly got it off. The good thing about this time I can just leave the arms attached because the holes will be in the same spot so I don't need to redo any holes or anything. So to put it back on it really shouldn't take too long. But... So this is that base plate that I was talking about. See that it's cracked here, it's cracked that whole top. These two bolts that went through here were bent as well so it took a fair bit of force because the hydrovane rudder was obviously hitting the reef as well. You've seen what the other rudder was looked like. It looked like this. It got absolutely smashed. And so, but the hydrovane rudder was still on point. So all of that force had to go somewhere else. And it went into this pad and it went into the transom and the transom's a little bit weak. So we're gonna have to reinforce all of that on the inside. I've done a bit of damage with the uh, fiberglass on the inside, but it was a bit of a weak soft spot. And I did know that when I put it on years ago. So there are the two bolts, definitely got a little bit uh, hammered. Thanks for watching Legends. As you can see, I've got my hands full with the problems to fix and the refit downstairs. With only a couple of months until the spud arrives, I have a lot of work to complete. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you know when new videos are up. Let the nesting and the boat work begin.